What's up guys, this is Ashley with Outdoor Legacy. I'm gonna to talk to y'all today about a uh, helmet setup and a monocular. Um, this is one that has been out for a little while and we haven't done a review on it yet, but I've been running this unit for a few months and thought I'd go ahead and get a review put out there and talk to y'all about it. I know a lot of guys have been calling, they've been asking about it, so I wanna go ahead and talk about it and show it to you today, get some video footage up, uh, let y'all see what to expect out of this unit. So today, you can see on my helmet, uh, we're running the Infrared Outdoor, the MH25V2. Uh, this unit can be used as a monocular, be ran on a helmet like mm -hmm. you see in this video. Um, run them out on a Team Windy helmet. Uh, got it mounted on Wilcox mounts. <clears throat> modular bridge, folding arm, uh, and a dovetail. Um, this dovetail is not included. Um, you can get this from Outdoor Legacy, um, but it will uh, snap off. And you can see here, it just screws into the top of this unit. So you put this uh, shoe on and then you can run it in this Wilcox setup on a helmet like I've been doing. Um, so let's talk about the unit. 640 resolution, uh, so 12 micron, uh, field of view, looking at about 92 feet at 100 yards. Uh, detection range, looking at roughly 1400 yards, that's going to be on a human sized target, it'll detect the heat. As far as ID range, you know, this is going to be uh, relative to who you talk to, in my opinion, on a coyote. 30 pound coyote, you're gonna identify that at 350 yards, maybe 400 under the right conditions. So pretty good range out of that unit. Uh, as far as weight, guys, it's lightweight, weighs about nine ounces, and it's running a sub 50 millikelvin sensor. So it's pretty much what most scopes are at today. Uh, we've got a few guys that are breaking down in that lower range, sub 25 and um, lower. So. Uh, as far as magnification, you're looking at a one, uh, one power base magnification. It goes up to a four power. Uh, we'll kind of go through that in a minute on the rotary dial. Um, color palettes, white hot, black hot, red hot, and uh, rainbow. So uh, you got four options there in the color palettes. Uh, what else? Um, batteries, it runs different battery systems. So as you can see, I'm running this on a backup battery pack that I have here, the back of my helmet. Cable runs across the top. It's a USB-C plug-in right here on the front. So that, man, it powers this thing for, I don't know, I've never timed it, but I mean, I say 20 plus hours. Um, let me unplug this here. So as it comes, this is your battery compartment right here in the front. It's gonna come with this battery. It's a 16340. 16, Comes with a 16340, fits in this standard compartment. Uh, operates on one of these batteries. Uh, you can expect two to three hours of runtime depending on the temperature where you're at. But uh, two to three hours of runtime is gonna be a good real time frame. Uh, you can also run it on a CR123A battery. And you can unscrew the cap here and put a spacer. Spacer will let you run a longer battery. It's a 16650. And that battery will give you three plus hours, close to four hours of runtime. So if you're running on a helmet, I, I try to, you know, I try to get lightweight. I, I don't want a lot of weight. So I'm gonna run the standard setup. I do throw this um, 16340 battery in it and plug it up. And, uh, and I can go for multiple nights without ever having to worry about losing um, battery. Um, let's go through a few other things. So, of course, it has your eye cup, diopter focus. So you can focus this to your eye if you wear glasses. Uh, you can get that image nice and sharp. Uh, and then your objective focus here on the front. Also has a lens cover. As you can see, it's closed right now. But you twist uh, this end cap, and it will open and close that. Uh, of course, your battery cover. And then here is your control knob. It is a rotary dial uh, right here. That's your power button. And that's how you control all the menu functions on this unit. So 
it's pretty simple to use um, you know one-handed operation um, cool thing about the v2 v2 has uh, video recording has decent audio recording and it will also have uh, Wi-Fi so you can stream this to the out the infrared outdoor out uh, and see what you know your, your hunting partner could have a phone or tablet and see what you see through this monocular um, you can also pull the videos off and pull pictures off uh, it does take photos as well um, so let's get into a few other things here um, you know works as a handheld it's very small again weighs nine ounces um, works pretty good as a handheld if you wanted to put a lanyard on this you know wear it around your neck uh, that's an option uh, but, uh, I think it works good on a helmet man it's, it's lightweight um, very small compact uh, the weight really isn't an issue you know with a battery pack on this helmet um, I don't notice it uh, it doesn't it doesn't feel like there's a lot of forward weight when I'm wearing my helmet with this unit uh, flips up out of the way easily and um, yeah it, it's pretty simple um, as far as the nuking this thing has um, auto calibration you can set it to auto or manual uh, one thing I noticed when running it on my helmet um, when I had it in a raised position uh, not every time but sometimes when you bring it down back into the viewing position it will automatically refresh or nuke um, and, and clean that image up so that was something I kind of liked uh, it was handy I didn't have to worry about bringing the unit down to back to my eye and then pushing the buttons and getting it to calibrate it would automatically do it again it wouldn't do it every time but um, sometimes it would so guys that's kind of the walk around this unit um, this is what you can expect um, you know realistic realistically man I, I was after a lot of coyotes I was after a lot of hogs I mean, um, 150 yards, 200 yards, I, mean, I, had, a, I had a good image. Um, it is 640, so you have a pretty good, sharp image. Is it the best? I mean, no, it's not. Um, on coyotes, you know, I had several different sets where I was calling coyotes and had coyotes come in and work. Um, again, 350, uh, I think, is realistic. Depending on weather, I was using this a lot in the summer. It was really humid, and... Um, I, I was able to tell that I was looking at coyotes. Uh, the audio is good. Um, I don't, you know, I couldn't, there are a lot of times I couldn't pick up the e-caller. Uh, but uh, gunshots, you know, voices, uh, it, it's going to pick that up. It, it, it's, it's a lot better than the older IRA audio that, that used to be really non-existent on like the uh, MK1s. So it does have good audio. So it does not come with this shoe, like I said a while ago. Um, this is an aftermarket part. Uh, we carry this. It's just uh, you know it's a pigtail, and this is what you have to have to run this on a uh, dovetail um, adapter on a helmet. Um, there's no reticle, so you you can't use this as a dedicated rifle scope. It will not work. This is strictly for monocular use only. So let's go into, I'm going to turn this unit on and kind of record and go through some of the menu functions, kind of explain what some of these menu functions are. So let's get into that next. All right, guys, you can see here I'm on the main screen. Uh, I do have the lens cover closed. You're not going to see anything. Obviously, you can see I'm recording. It's going to display that in the eyepiece. You'll see the timer running, and you'll see in the top right corner that it is plugged up to an external power, battery, external power source. Uh, top left, you've got your color palette. You see an auto nuke, is what the A stands for, and the magnification. If you want to zoom in, 
and rotate the dial clockwise. As you see, it goes in 0.1 increments all the way to a four power. You want to zoom out, you can roll the dial counterclockwise back down to wherever your desired magnification is. Um, quick press of the menu, uh, rotary dial. So bottom left here in blue, that is your nuke, your refresh. You can uh, highlight that, push the button, and you can manually nuke the image, nuke the screen. Uh, this is your camera. Um, when you highlight your camera, uh, quick press is going to take a picture, and long press is going to start video. Uh, color palettes will be next. You can push this to go to black hot, then red hot, then your color, or rainbow, then back to white hot. Uh, this last dial here is your icon, is your uh, brightness. Um, you have about five brightness settings. You can scroll through that and change the brightness. A uh, long press will back you out. Uh, again, that was the a quick press brings up this short menu system, and a long press will back you out. Okay, you can long press the dial and you get into the main menu. Uh, and this is, turns your Wi-Fi off and on, your Bluetooth off and on, and then your sensor adjustment. Um, you go back down to device, quick press, and you go to the next icon, which is your video out, range finder. That's going to be a stadiometric range finder, guys. It's not a laser range finder. And then picture in picture. You do have a picture in picture function in this unit. And yes, the picture in picture will show up on the video. Uh, move over to calibration. You can set the time, and then you have some settings. Um, guys, the sharpness. I want to bring this up. I did have to play with the sharpness on this unit to get a better image. I believe it comes at a two or three from the factory. I turned it up to four, and I liked it. I got a better image. Um, then you've got your nuke mode. You can set to automatic or manual, and then a standby mode. Uh, then, of course, a long press will back you out of that menu system. So that is the menu, uh, different menus and what the icons do. All right, guys, I just walked you through the menu system on this, what the buttons are, the menus are, this one single button, how to operate it, uh, short press, long press, and of course, turning the dial. Um, one thing I want to note on this unit, on powering it up is not an issue as far as it doesn't matter where it's orientated. You just long press the dial and it will power the unit on. Powering off is different. When you get ready to turn off this unit, if you're in the horizontal or looking up and you long press the dial, it will just simply bring up your main menu function. It will not power off. If you want to power this unit off, you have to look down. So that's one thing to note that uh, you cannot turn it off in any position. You have to have it pointed at the ground to turn this unit off. Um, so yeah, guys, it's, uh, it's a good solid unit. Um, you know, I will throw, uh, a little comparison video up between this and I will show you some examples of the other unit that Infrared Outdoor has. And that is the, the micro, the RH25. It is currently on sale right now. Now they're both 640 units. Uh, the RH25 has a lot more features. The RH25 has a better picture image. Even though they're both 640 units, you have a lot better image than the RH25. Uh, I will throw some video up here so hopefully you can see it and kind of get a comparison of how the RH25 looks. 
So if you're interested in that, uh, you can definitely call and talk to me about it and we can discuss the um, differences between the two units. I don't have one here in front of me at the time, but I ran that unit for several months back in the late winter uh, on this helmet. Um, right now, guys, this is like the second week of October. Um, IRA has a lot of sales they're throwing out right now. Currently, this unit's not on sale. Uh, it is a standard price, $39.99, so $4,000. Um, it might go on sale by the time you're watching this. I do not know. Uh, with the way IRA is throwing these sales out, we, we don't have a clue what's coming next. So currently, as a second week of October, $39.99 for this unit. Um, if you got any questions about it, you want to know more about it, give me a call. I'll be glad to talk to you about it. 877-350-1818. Uh, or you can go to the website, um, outdoorlegacygear.com. You can see this unit as well as everything else that we carry and have there on our site. So appreciate y'all watching. Uh, I've got some more reviews coming up, a few other things I'm going to run through, but I just wanted to cover this MH25 and, and go through some video and uh, let you guys see what to expect. And if you're still not sure if it's right for you, just call me. I've got a lot of time behind it, as well as a few other monoculars on this helmet. And, uh, you know, I can give you a real life opinion of how this thing works and high humidity or bad weather, uh, you know, a good clear night. Um, I've ran it in every situation. So if you want to know more about it, call us. Other than that, we'll see y'all in the next one, guys. Thanks.